All right, well, I would say let's go ahead and get started. Tonight's presentation, we will have William Sloan. I'm going to William, let William introduce himself a little bit. And then he's going to walk us through some of the uh, council strips. Supposedly, he's got them all kind of identified here. We'll see. So, some them. of them. I yeah. need some information on some. Can you all see that, Chris? Yeah, we can see it. So we'll okay. let William introduce himself. Um, I'm William Sloan. And we're going to go through some of the history, and uh, he is going to have some questions at some point. So if you guys have any comments or anything, feel free to chime in, All right. and uh, we'll see how it goes. So, William, go go for it. Uh, my name is William Sloan. I'm in the uh, district chair for the Etowah District. Uh, I've been in the, around here since 07. Um, been in this uh, council since about 2011. So uh, I'll have a side collection of the CSPs I'd like to present tonight. I think I've got all of them, but uh, uh, just going through the checklist and asking folks. So as we go through this, if y'all identify one that I don't have and I've got some questions on some stuff, I'm just trying to figure out some years. We'll kind of go through and kind of make this like a interactive uh, presentation, if you will. Go ahead here, get started here. So this is our first uh, council strip. If y'all know, our council was formed by the merger of three councils, Chocolaca, Tennessee Valley, and Central Alabama in 98. And then it just goes on to tell that the original Chocolaca Council was formed in 1921. The Etowah County Council, which is oddly enough where I live, was formed in 1919 and changed its name to Northeastern Alabama in 1925. The council merged into Chocolaca in 1933. The Central Alabama Council was formed as the Birmingham Area Council in 1915, changing its name in 1996. And then the Tennessee Valley Council was formed in 1924. And then they absorbed the Muscle Shoals Council in 1928 and the Andrew Jackson Council in 1930. So that leads us up to, you know, us being merged in 98 and forming the um, Great Alabama Council. And so this first patch here is the uh, original S1 first flap. And then according to the checklist I'll be referencing, which is that CSP guide from the ISCA, uh, there's also a variant uh, that I have as well that I've identified down here. So some of these scans are, uh, you know, smaller, or larger. I'm just trying to fit as much on one page because of the amount of uh, CSPs that we have. So uh, as I said, this is a working presentation. I don't know the history of a lot of these patches, but uh, I welcome any knowledge that y'all can provide me as we go through this. And I kind of write this down because I want to go back and, and put these on the notes on the slide so we can kind of uh, remember. The uh, checklist does a really good job. I just want to try to figure out maybe some of the years that these were uh, released or, and uh, if y'all remember kind of what event it was uh, released at. So let's begin. <laughs> So these are uh, scans of the three oversized patches. And I actually picked this, uh, this particular item up off eBay and it was still on the sheet, has not been removed. Um, it's, uh, I'm not sure what it is. It's just a, um, a gold model or according to this. And uh, it came out, I, I assume maybe this might be a Friends of Scouting patch, uh, but we've also got this family campaign for 99. Does anybody have any information that I can write down about these patches? Does any of these ring a bell? These are the oversized flaps. They're, they're a fairly good size, larger than a standard CSP. They were, they were money raisers though, William. They were fundraisers? Okay. Yeah. It's, friends, it's friends of scouting, but they called it family campaign. Okay. It's basically for hands of scouting. Okay. Now the regular, the oversized regular was what came out that first year of the council because everybody, that was just the standard issue. They were just big. Okay. So that was in 98. Uh, were, were these gold ones, was this around the same time period, 98? I know that one up the top's 99, but was the gold one around that same time period as well? It, it was along that same timeline. We have the one, uh, it's numbered uh, 088. I don't know if they offered them to all the units, but I was in unit 88 at the time and they offered them to the, to the units to buy, you know, and it, it's framed and set up 
just like the one you have there, but ours has zero eighty eight on it. It okay. was it was some sort of like uh, Mike had said a money raiser, but they offered the numbered ones to the units. Okay. All right. Number one. So yeah. Okay. Good information. All right. Thank you. All right. And then, uh, then here was just some more standard flaps for the uh, family campaign and FOS. And uh, some of the years like this one in 2000 corresponded with a gold square, uh, rec a gold square with it. And then in 2001, it correlated with a, a gold square, a silver square under it that was ghosted like a ghosted white. And then this family campaign one from 2000 was uh, gray. And then this one's from 99 uh, that, I, that I showed earlier, and it came with a corresponding uh, square patch as well. And then here's just a separate one that I had additional. And then this uh, five-year anniversary patch of square. I just had a picture I threw in there, um, which comes with this next set, which is this district, uh, district set, which I've got, I think, made up of three slides. Mike, I think you were telling me, and I'll show all three uh, slides here, that this particular set was maybe given out at Talladega Raceway. Does anybody know roughly maybe what year this, if that was the case and if it was given out at the raceway, or are you allowed to buy the set? Uh, that's where, it, yeah, we had the, up in the press box. We were invited up into the press box. If you had either been nominated, either had got, gotten a James West award or Somebody had given a thousand dollars, like uh, Ashinachi was nice enough to give a thousand dollars in my name, and I got a, uh, a James E. West set uh, at Talladega. And I, golly, the year was because we had a, a Scatterama down there. So I, if you can figure out the year that Scatterama is when it was. Yeah, this was in two thousand at the Talladega encampment. 2000 okay in 2000 yeah. okay good I'm and that was, so that would have been and the reason i know that was because i was there on uh oa service corps and so i vaguely remember the individual districts were able to sell their district ones but if you wanted the whole set it came with the james e west and it was sold as a james e west set but if you uh we found out later later on in the i think later saturday afternoon or early sunday you could go in where they had that staff uh, I can see it in my mind, but they, the staff, uh, people, the ladies that worked at the council office, mm -hmm. all in there, they were in there selling any, any of them you wanted to buy. You could buy it. So I bought another, I didn't get another James E. West, but I bought another <laughs> set, set of the strip. Yeah. Right. So these, okay. these would have initially been released at that encampment in 2000. Okay, 2000 camp. Okay, good deal. Thank you for that. And then, that and then, feedback. and then there was also a detail which you probably could get into about the quantity on each of these. They were they were proportional to. These are the ones that were proportional to the the membership, right? So the larger districts had more CSPs ordered, and the smaller districts ordered fewer. So there's not an even number of all of them. Is that correct? Uh, I've heard. So That's what are, uh, so, yeah. So some of these are harder to find than others. Yeah, the Chocolaca was my hardest one. I after four years, I finally got in several postings on Facebook. I actually found a guy down at Heflin that actually had this one, and uh, that was by far the hardest one. And JT had told me he remembered them that they kind of like you said, Chris sold these. They didn't have like fifty of one of every or hundred of every. They were smaller batches. So this one, by far, for some reason, Chocolaca was di very difficult for me to find, but I finally did find it. Thank goodness to complete my set. So thank you for that information, and I'll put this in the presentation later on um, as well. What they probably did uh, here's where they ordered had a, they had a quantity to order for the production run and they split that quantity accordingly to the size of the district. And there again, some districts less, some districts more, but the total sum of all the districts equaled out to the uh, quantity number that they ordered for those, that type of plow. 
or script. That's my guess. That makes any okay. sense. Right? Yeah. yeah, it does. It does. Okay. Yeah, my guess is if we got with David Jordan and we dug into the, the paper archives deep enough, we'll find the PO for the swaps and we could probably get you the exact numbers. Okay. Now, this is kind of where the, to me, I've been talking to Philip Clark and uh, uh, this kind of gets a mystery because when you get into this checklist, it actually shows that the top one, this, the white border uh, individual numbered set was given out with the district set, Mike, do you, Chris, do y'all remember that? Was this white, white, given out with a? It says uh, white border, white backing, photochromatic of the S3, issued with a district set, one thousand made individually numbered. Does that make sense? I don't remember that one. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember that one either. But it so may that may have been a concurrent release, but I don't think it was part of the set. Okay. All right. So that leads me to, of course, the five-year anniversary there, uh, Patch, and then the 2002 Alabama Council, because um, I had Phillips in some pictures of his patches. This also lists a, a essay, uh, like the number 29, for a family campaign 2002, which I have never seen. It's basically like the 2001 version, but it's got the family campaign written across the 2002. Has anybody ever seen a patch that has a family campaign uh, let me see if I can go back here. That like this from 2002, with, or this you can see it better here. That's got family campaign across that says 2002. I think it's an error in the guide because Philip doesn't have one. I did some research and I remember uh, about three years ago, I actually took this picture in the council office um, of this patches, I guess, from the council that they had put a display one time. And it's got the three current releases the here but it doesn't have any it's got the 2002 but doesn't have anything referencing family campaign across the top so that's kind of one of my mysteries does anybody recall a 2002 with family campaign across the top of it i think it's an error in the guide myself and this is a picture from the council of what they show Need to find out who supplied the information to the guide. Right. To substantiate it. Okay. But uh, Philip couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. Um, I know, oh, Greg, I sent you a message, there. but you were, in the, you were at the Tratery. Go back so. um, Go back to one of those first screens you have that had that family campaign oh, yeah, TSP. That's possibly it with this. Uh, oh, yeah. They're at right 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 This wasn't uh, listed with a year on. Okay, okay, yeah. Like I said, I'll, I'll I think it's just an error myself because uh, uh, I, I I haven't found any recollection. I couldn't find any old eBay listings on it or any past sales. I just think maybe it's just a a boo boo because they list the actual um, two thousand two as a kind of a SA 29.1, but they call the 29 with the family campaign across. So, and I just don't think that that, that exists. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep digging there if y'all come across, but I, I haven't found anybody yet that, that has one that says family campaign actually across the 2002. So thank you for that info. Have you, have you talked to James flat about any of this stuff? I have not. That's a good resource too. Yeah. James would have been on the board at the time and he was a lodge advisor at the time. He probably would know the answer to that. Okay. Thank you, Chris. I'll uh, I'll ask him. All right. All right. Here's a uh, uh, our FOS CSPs. I actually got this picture that I had a screenshot from uh, Greg Swebman sent me this, and so this again raises another um, question for me. Um, it's pretty easy with this being 2004, the Marine being 05, the gold uh, being old six and the brown being 07. Um, and then 2009, which we'll get to in a minute, it's got the, the gold one, it's the executive issue. But this 2008 one, um, I believe it's the numbered version here like this, because it says it's a white and that is white in the picture. Greg, would you know if when this came out in 2008, was it possibly numbered? Because I can't find any reference to just a plain white 
ghosted patch other than this one that we have here that has a that were a thousand made so to me that's kind of the second mystery that i've kind of uncovered or trying to solve if that makes sense does anybody know if they made just a solid white ghosted unnumbered version of this for late i seem to remember that because there was uh, one of the one of the venturing guys had somehow gotten one and i got a good look at it but I don't remember a number on it. And okay. I, I remember trying to look for a number, but I want to say there was a white without a number. Okay, so it, it may possibly exist then. Has anybody else ever seen one white goes to without a number? You know, all the other ones besides the, uh, all the other ones are pretty plentiful out if you're looking for one. Uh, okay, all right. Greg, do you have any comments on that or? I have an empty spot in my book. Oh, do you really? Okay. Okay. I'm looking at, at those pages right now. And uh, I don't have anything there for 2008, not saying that one of those other ones uh, couldn't have been. Well, there's three white ghosted ones. One of them is a uh has 2002 only um one has 2001 so those obviously are not it and then the plain white that's numbered so that that could be it right that's the only thing i could think of because like i said just looking at sales and, and researching history all those other ones are very plentiful out there but this this one here is kind of the the mystery again um, that I haven't been able just to nail down. So I'll, I'll see if uh, Dr. Flack can provide some insight on that too during that time period. Well, that was 2008, so, okay. All right, and then again, here's the uh, 2009 executive issue. It, it says it's there's 300 of these that were made and it's our standard CSP, but it's got the uh, gold one in the middle of it. And then our 2010 was the 95th anniversary of our council. And uh, uh, if y'all if y'all haven't read this yet, and I learned this from Greg, that uh, all the patches they made patches based off all the colors in our our standard flap. It's how they designed this Friends of Scouting um, from the standard council strip. I mean, it says in here to you, but I I didn't know that till Greg actually explained that to me and sent me a picture of this uh, piece of paper. So I thought that was pretty neat. So uh, again, just some help here. Uh, this is a standard uh, scouting founders of scouting series uh, with Baden Powell, Seton, um, da Daniel Beard, James West and uh, Boyce. Uh, it does say that this Eagle Scout award was from 2000 uh, and uh, no, I'm sorry, on this particular one, it did not give a year. Um, it does later on down. So does anybody have any idea? It, I think it's around 2008 because of the way this is listed, but does anybody know when this kind of series with these five and this Eagle Scout uh, may have came out? It was sometime around there because that's about the time the digital eagle started, and I can remember it being advertised in there around the 2008 time period. Mm -hmm. Is that for the Eagle Scout uh, CSP as well? You think? Not positive on that. Okay. All right. I'll go. I'll. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll dig some more on those. Okay. All right. Hmm. let's see here all right then we got into our uh, uh red white and blue uh friends of scouting csps um you got the standard csp here and, and harold i remember you putting it together trying to find a patch that didn't have friends of scouting on it we never made one we just made the one with the friends of scouting but i remember you sent a request out looking for one for your uniform uh 
but this contained all these districts uh, here, along with the uh, numbered James E. West. I had talked to JT at a board meeting one night and asked him if he knew how many of these uh, James E. West fellow patches were made, and he did not know how many that they had made. So I will say in my quest for these, it was very hard for me to find the um, Shelby and the uh, Westmoreland uh, district patches. I was talking to Philip Marks and he used to be a DE, I believe, or had something that, or maybe a district chair, but he was telling me he remembers sometimes he'd have a brick of these and he knew a DE one time that had a brick of these that never got handed out or left in a drawer or, or what, but those were the two hardest ones for me to find. Um, and I was able to finally find this one from Philip, but uh, those two were very hard for me. I don't know the quantities that they were issued on those but the Shelby and the Westmoreland were very hard for me to, to pick up um, just as a, a side note there. So, and this shows to be around 2008 is when this was issued as far as the district FOS things. Uh, moving on to 2010, we had our standard uh, CSP flap. Uh, and then over here, we issued uh, just a standard uh, flap here that's not a friends of scouting along with a gold mylar and a silver mylar and um, this one here the 100 made i uh actually able to found a guy in talladega i had to go and i've been looking for the silver one forever i finally found it and he remembered several years back he he bought his as a set um so that's how i was able to pick up the gold is pretty plentiful out there there were 500 um the, the silver one I very rarely ever seen, but I was able to pick up one from him um, as a set. So but we had a silver mylar and gold mylar that just had blue there. So why was the silver uh, and gold then we get, numbered? Uh, th this was a hundred of these of the silver and 500 of the uh, gold. He was telling me that they had a hundred sets of these for sale and he bought two sets at the time and the set he got was number 81 and 82. And several years back he sold his 82 set and then I was able to pick this up uh, from him. But they were sold from the council as a as a set. That's how he got them. And then they released a lot more of the gold mylar border border ones. I just wonder why they numbered them and didn't number the wanted the blue border i got you i got you yeah yeah and that number comes from the uh on the one at the top the blue border it, it says 500 made so i'm just going by what um the guide the I, I says so i guess the uh and then this is just going through the the years we uh, standard 2011 fos uh 2012 and then 2013 also came with these two rounds. Um, the question I have, does anybody know, did, how did you get the rounds? Did, did you have to make an additional donation or does anybody know how that, how that worked? Or you, you see this one fairly decent. You hardly ever see the rounds, but um, does anybody know if, if you, what you had to buy or donate or what to get these rounds with that particular patch? Okay. All right. 2014. Um, again, it came with the uh, the Friends of Scouting round. This again for me was a difficult patch to pick up. A hard one. It very rarely, if ever, comes up. Um, I finally found one, and I had to buy ten to get one. But I actually found uh, ten of them. Um, but this one you very rarely see pop up uh, for sale anywhere. And then starting in 2015 to now, our current FOS, we started uh, using the scout law and we're currently to uh, obedient is our latest one that we just got issued uh, this past spring. Um, but it's a pretty, pretty good series, um, pretty colorful series, but that's, that's where we're at now. So I assume we'll, we'll continue this out for another five years before we we change over and, and do something else. 
I didn't notate it, but if y'all remember the first couple, I think it was either the first two or three years, these had a cord, a corresponding buckle that you could get um, along with the CSP that kind of matched. And then I think the third year, it was a generic buckle that didn't have the, the actual word of the law from the, uh, it didn't say helpful, it's just a generic buckle, but uh, that you also got a buckle with that uh, as well, based on your donation. Here's some just one here. They did a coin. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they did a coin too. They did a coin. Uh, here we get into the three piece uh, Wood Badger Union set from 2014, um, three piece set uh, that they handed out. Uh, they had their union that they also had these at Scout Fest, um, were there. And then, uh, Wood Badge 2020 issue that just came out, uh, of course, last year. Then, according to the guide, this is another Eagle Scout CSP from 2011. And then from 2012, uh, there's a CSP for the Centennial. And I'm sure y'all seen it. Um, the Our council made a 100, 100 piece commemorative set of the Eagle Scout Centennial. It was nicely framed. Usually goes for about a hundred bucks, uh, but that came out along, and it had one of these CSPs built in with that uh, eagle rank and round and stuff like that. Um, here's a some more couple of tough issues. Um, venturing BSA here. Uh, this is a brown oblong shaped round CSP. Uh, I believe this came out in 2012. I was uh, asking Seth about it. That's what he thought. Uh, it's been a while back. Does anybody have any maybe different, maybe when that came out? Does anybody know? I know it was a difficult issue for me. It, it doesn't pop up. It's not a common one either. Hey, William? Yes. So the story I've always been told on the Venturing CSP was that it came out of Crew 7070 in Huntsville. I was ah, told that okay. Hilton's oldest daughter, Auburn, designed it, and then they issued it from the unit. Okay. All right, I can reach out to him. So this may not particularly be an official council CSP, but still maybe it came from a unit, you think, Crew 77? Okay. They may have gotten it approved, but I'm not okay. really sure. She was high on leadership, so she likely got it approved. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Crew 77, John Kelton's daughter. Okay, venturing, okay, I'll, I'll ask a follow up there. Um, Crew 7070. They would go by Crew Seventy, but they got the they they picked up the seven for the consolidation. Seventy seventy, okay, all right. Then this here, uh, Maddie Colwell. The funny thing about this is they made two hundred fifty of them, but these hardly ever come up. Um, when they do, they at least go for twenty five to thirty bucks usually. With what I've seen on the past sales, but it's a real pretty patch. But it's a very it doesn't come up uh, uh, that often either. Um, but it's a pretty cool patch. Um, this is a 2017, uh, 2007 World Jamboree from our council. I believe this is part, I know I've seen at least six patches of different councils for the Jamboree. So I imagine it's a six piece set. I don't know, does anybody know if there's, if there's more than six pieces to this set? I think it's that's, just. I believe that's correct. Okay, all right. Uh, then this uh, oversized uh, CSP, it's it's huge uh, from 2008 Talladega, um, and then we've got our COVID flap that we, I mean, uh, CSP that we just issued, uh, you know, last year. Uh, Scout Fest 2018 uh, standard, and then the staff issue, uh, Powder Horn 2017 and 19 uh, issue CSPs. And then our national jamboree issues uh, standard, and then our venturing uh, gold bordered CSP. And I, I think John Dodd told me that there's also like a Chinese fake particular of this particular CSP that's out there that has a orange border. Is that correct, John Dodd? So there's a fake of the venturing CSP that copies the original design because it was supposed to have more mylar on the fireworks, but they cut costs and they came out with this but somehow somebody in China made one that has more mylar and follows the original design. Okay. And you do know it was never used. The group didn't, the venturing group didn't go. 
The veteran oh, okay. crew, didn't go, actually. Huh? I was in the veteran crew. But did they go? We did. But it was something was about it that it was. I don't remember what it was now. But I thought I thought it was because. Mm, I'll have to think about it. But I thought it was because y'all didn't go. But I guess I'm wrong. You won very many of you though, were there? Short history, there were, it was a crew of three contingents, the Al Greater Alabama Contingent, Central Georgia Contingent, and the Canadian Contingent. Oh, so, that, that's right. There was such a, okay. No. All right, here's our Centuries of Service CSP from 2015. Uh, and then uh, 2019, Comer uh, Scout Staff. And then 2020, uh, Comer uh, Scout Staff CSP that actually came with a round. Uh, and then this is a, uh, Greg, do you want to kind of explain this one? I know you were telling me it's from a district executive that had this, uh, he had this made and designed. And I think there, I think there was only 50 or 100 of these made according to the guide. But I remember you telling me some history about this particular, uh, particular patch. Yeah, so it's um it's sort of um sort of strange. So a couple of these popped up one at a time on eBay, and they would sell eighty to a hundred bucks, and they were kind of spaced out uh, time frame wise when they would show up, and there eventually was probably five or six that showed up over time. And one Sunday night, I just so happened to be uh, browsing eBay, and this was listed as a lot of 37. And so um, it was buy it now or, or make an offer. I made an offer, and the guy accepted. So I sent him a message and asked him, you know, what these were for, where they came from. And come to find out, it was actually a former DE in my district. And he said that these were created to be a supplemental friends of scouting. And there was only like three or four given out, but no one, no one in my district ever remembers them. Um, and so I asked him about the design and he had been a DE in South Carolina and this design was on an activity patch over there. And he just took that design and put it on this and had them made. But there's 50, 50 of these in existence. Yeah. And that design is obviously has a, a heavy NASA inspiration on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They call it the space shuttle on the description. 50 made is what the, uh, the God has. So I'll put that notation yeah, it's, in there. It's got, um, the scan on the back, you can scan it to uh, uh, check the information. Gotcha. Yeah, and it'll show up that there's 50. 50 million, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a, uh, a little mini CSP uh, that I picked up. Uh, it's very small. It's probably a half the size of a standard CSP. Um, this was a Philmont CSP that uh, we had made uh, and Chris Tucker's crew had made for this year um, for our trek out to Philmont. So it's kind of an unofficial GAC CSP, but uh, David Self and the council gave us permission to make one. Um, then here is uh, the two NYLT CSPs. This one again was my last thorn in my side. Um, these NYLT strips, this one's pretty common. This not as common. This one here was so hard. It's the old version. And I was talking to several uh, NYLT leaders and youth. And the problem with finding one of these unsewn is when most of the youth bought these, they sold them to their uniform. So that's why they're, I've been told they're harder to find because they got them and sold them on the uniforms right away. So there were not a lot of those just, uh, just around unsewn, but I did finally pick one up for a little bit of money. So, William, we can't see your cursor. Is the left one the tough one or the right one? Yes, I'm sorry, the left one. I apologize. Okay. The left one with the red, 
as the uh, was it, and it's an oblong shape, a different funny shape of CSP again as well, kind of like the venturing one. Uh, I'm sorry, can you see my cursor now, Chris? Let me see if I can. Yeah, we can uh, see it now. Okay, I got to, I'm sorry, I had on the wrong screen. I've got dual screens. Um, Seth, Seth helped me with these. Um, these are just some I picked up um, that just mimic our council CSP shoulder patch. I just put them in there and collect them because they're real similar to our CSP, but he called them knockoffs from other, other councils kind of using our design. So I just want to put that in there and show that as well. We, we also have there's one more. There's okay. at least one more counts done a knockoff of that as well. Okay, I'll have to dig for that. We also I also have a magnet I didn't scan, but there's a magnet that for our CSP that's a tiny magnet uh, that's our standard flap CSP as well. So here's our national jamboree uh, from 2013 CSPs. We had the same centerpiece. Uh, but then we had, I, I believe it's a contingent and a standard flap. I believe this on the... Uh, hang on, well, your uh, slide did not advance. Okay. There we go, now we got it. Okay. Uh, same center patch here, but we had two different sets. I believe one was probably a fundraiser and one was for the contingent. Um, we This one, uh, one had 500 made. Um, the other one had 200 made of uh, the particular CSPs. These actually have a, uh, where you can scan the QR code on the back and then just your standard council's uh, JSP for, for the Jamboree. I hate, I hate these things. I wish councils would get away from them. <laughs> uh, did, it, did that advance, Chris, from 2017? Yeah, there's, you've had some weird lag off and on tonight there okay now it goes i'm sorry that's all right my son's probably in there playing xbox and killing every bit of wi-fi i got so uh, this is from 2017 um interesting design uh, a couple of kids broke my heart hurt my feelings at jamboree and told me i didn't have a cool patch set so they wouldn't trade with me so um they were looking for cool and they said this wasn't cool, but this came out in 17 and we only had one, one design. So I, I had tough, I was able to trade, but it was tough for trading with us. Everybody loved the red salamander. Um, <laughs> and all. So that was from 2017. And then I just included um, the guide from the CSP in my last couple of slides of just how they listed everything. This is uh, where I was, uh, getting into the different districts and stuff. And then uh, to save slide space, I just put the two pages in one, but this is kind of where I had a question mark about the SA-29 and that it's a family campaign right here uh, that I don't think exists. And then uh, like Greg was saying, and we, I got to find out if our 2006 FOS, I mean, the 2008 FOS, if it is actually, um, you know, just a plain white ghosted with no number on it, because I said right here, this SA-27, they're saying that it was uh, given out with a district set, but uh, like Mike and you said, y'all don't remember that being so um, number, so I've just got, I'll do some more research, I'll reach out to Dr. Flat uh, and maybe ask him, but those are kind of the the mysteries there that I need to kind of solve. Um, and then this is the last page. This was up through 2017 as the latest uh, listing for their for their guide. And so there's a lot of stuff in here that um, can be added to that as well. Um, and that's it. So does anybody uh, anybody have any questions? It, did you show the James E. West Council strip that went with the ones they were given out at Talladega back in 2002, was it? I did. Well, yeah. I, yeah I the, uh, let's see here. That one right there, Mike. Hang on, we got to catch up. I'm sorry. Got the lag. It's slide number oh, eight. We got it. We got it. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Mine was number 10. So they were numbered for the set. Is that correct, Mike? The whole complete set? No. That was, no. That's not numbered for a recipient. No. That's, num that's numbered for the set. Correct. So William, sometimes it pays to be in the right place at the right time at one of the University of Scoutings that was held at Coleman High School. Um, the council had a table set up uh, actually pr promoting venturing. Um, and they sold the last piece of a brick of the old CSP for the venture or for the NYLT and the Maddie Cole Wells and started selling the new ones. So you could pick all three of those up in one stop if you were lucky that day. Wow, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> they're, they're, they're hard now to, to get. I mean, if you're trying to find one at least. So, you know, I'll, I'll put these notes in the slides and um, and contact Dr. Flat and see if he can shed some light on some of our questions tonight and see if those, if they can remember if those truly did exist. Um, is there anyone else in the council that y'all know that may still be around from 98, uh, 2000 that may, maybe was involved or might have some insight on patches like that? You're right, but he doesn't, he sort of like he puts them up when he gets them and doesn't, <laughs> doesn't keep up with, with them, but he's no telling what that young man has. We, William, did okay. you did you go through the other JSPs for the other years, 2000, 2001, 2005? Oh, I, I did not, Greg, um, just because of the kind of the CSP shape but you're talking about the – I do have them, but you're talking about like in this uh, picture here. Let me let it catch up. The JSPs, yeah. Yeah. Let me know when that gets there. Like the picture from the council office? Yeah. Have y'all – is that picture there yet? No. Okay. Yeah. There it is. That's, that's you talking about these, Greg? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do have these, and I guess they're a funky, like you said, JSP. But yes, I do, I do have those. I can, I can add those in there. That's not a problem, just for, uh, uh, for reference as well. So I'll do that. Let me make a note to add. Mm -hmm. There's one more in that picture that you didn't talk about. The okay. One, the one with the gold border. Uh, the bottom. The maroon. Well, the ninety fifth. Ninety fifth. Anniversary? Yeah, that one that was a little bit tougher to find too. Yep. Yeah, I've got that in here. Yeah, it was in the program. Yeah, it was uh right here. This one right here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So William and Greg, I sent uh, Greg Schwepman, I sent you uh, both y'all chat. Okay. Hey William, when you go back to the um, the earlier Friends of Scouting that had the square patches that correlated with it, mm -hmm. uh, from the early two thousands, I guess it was. Just. Uh, uh, we never really talk about it, but Chris, remind me if I'm wrong, but when the the large DSPs came out, uh, we had that rectangle patch as well for sale at the council office that looked very similar to these, but of course there was no numbering, no friends of scouting. It was just a plain council design. Yeah, the so you're talking about the top right square patch there. Um, yeah, there was a version of that. Uh, yeah, it's it was just plain. It was no friends of scouting or nothing. It was yeah, something back, like you could throw on a jacket or something. Go back one slide, William. All right, let me go back one slide here. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it was like that, but it didn't have the mylar or the number. And I have like one the bottom somewhere. Right. I think I've got one in the Yeah, in I've the got one of those somewhere. somewhere. I'll have to dig it out. But I, I remember that being a thing uh, when they came out with the the large CSPs. They had those along with them. What was the question about the rectangle? I think no, it's, it's, go ahead, it was just an observation that we had a plain one that was not a numbered one, not a friends of scouting that was a match to the uh, large CSP when it came out. Go back to the yeah. other screen. It, it has a green border instead of a gold border. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's no numbering or anything on it as well. The bottom one that has the five stars with the dates in the green. I think what you're talking about is this one without the stars and the and the dates. It's just yeah. the plain Jane green one. I don't yep. think it had a pocket loop though. No, no, they so didn't I, have pocket loops. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look it up, but it's got it. So where was that designed to be worn? If I don't think it was meant to be worn. On the, uh, the only the only time I've ever seen anybody wear it, I think I saw one person that had it on a pocket. And I, I think I saw a couple people who put them on a jacket somewhere. Yeah. Let me see here. Uh, oh. Look and see. All right. I've I got, got uh, what else? Let's see what I post. Let's see. I've got that one. Um, there was this. Uh, if y'all can see this, there was that plain one there. I think is what you're talking about. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's it. And then there's also one with a loop that's a uh, popcorn achiever as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all seen that. There was also one that says popcorn achiever on it. So, and uh, these are also I don't know what year, maybe it's the same time, but they came out with these honor unit patches and stuff. They were kind of the same design. That that's one I haven't seen. Yeah, like a green and a red um, around the same same time. And then they also had um, these distinguished service ones for different districts and stuff, I guess, yeah. depending on. What's uh, the district on that? Those are Creek and there's, there's that's Creek. Um, I've, I've seen, I've, all I've got is Creek, but I've seen, I've, I've seen a young man in the lodge actually wearing one that's uh, for Talacto. You know what, Cody Puritan had one on the other day, so did his uniform that said Talacto on it that was that style patch. Uh, for, I don't the know how creek, many. for the Creek ones, uh, there was three separate ones. There was like a distinguished service, another level. Then there was a misprint on the border. Uh, I ended up with both, all three of them. I, I earned two of them. Dan Coberly uh, came up with that, I think, when he was district chairman, chairman or commissioner. Um, but he had come up with those, and that was right at the end before they merged the two districts together. Uh, and then I'm guessing the Tolocto one came after that. But, uh, uh, but yeah, there are three versions of the creek. Uh, there were two levels of it, and then there was a misbordered one where they put the wrong, instead of silver mylar, they put gold mylar on it. I can't remember, but Dan Coberly, he's on Facebook. You can probably touch base with him, and he can uh, explain that probably better than I can. Okay. All right. Yeah, and I think Gene, he's got a comment in the chat. Gene, you want to unmute yourself and join the conversation here? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I typed in chat. I called John Kelton and just asked him about that venturing CSP, and he remembered that it um, was the first venturing one, very likely council approved, but was not a 7070 issue. And it didn't come from Auburn. Yeah. 
it's a it's it doesn't pop up very often at all um when it pops up so i'm not sure where like it said like you said i'm not sure where it originated from i just you no know, picture on that wait and i think i put the name right down he said barry porter and and i hope i got the right name um down but it was his daughter he thought had a hand in that now the maddie colwell flap was a design that he and auburn uh kelton collaborated on and then i've got a question about those um red white and blue csp somewhere around the huntsville scout office there were a lot of really thin uh, kind of cut edge red, white, and blue CSPs that were not embroidered edge that were given out for some reason somewhere. Um, and, and I don't know the history on those. Uh, I've never seen or heard of those, so that'd be an interesting to... Are you, are you talking about the red, white, and blue vertical bars? Uh, yes, the red, white, and blue vertical so the one you had instead the, of the the set eighty one you have gold and or, yeah, but there was a really thin cut edge one that did not have an embroidery around that were given out for a period of time, and I don't know if they were recruiting. I know Rose Ellen gave a bunch of them out at one time, and it was right before the group left for the twenty thirteen jamboree, so they were around twenty twelve ish, I think. And they they were CSPs as well, or red piece cut edge. Uh, William, go to your what is that the number eighty one set with the red, white, and blue and the silver and gold border and. The... Okay, uh, let me see here. You talking about two thousand ten or? Uh, uh, yeah, I think yeah. Uh, actually, we stumbled across some of the gold and yellow borders of this set at, when we were up at camp. Uh, but yeah, the the ones on the right hand side are cut edge; they're not rolled edge. Okay. So yeah, that the the yellow one to the left is a rolled edge, but the the other ones on the right hand side are all cut edge. Okay. Okay, so they may have been extras of that very top one. I don't, they're at home. I don't have them with me, but they were kind of plastic backed, really kind of thin. So maybe it's that top version. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess my question on that, that were the, if the bottom silver ones were numbered one through a hundred, were the gold ones only numbered one through a hundred and then 101 up was, was unnumbered or did they individually number 500 of those? They individually numbered 500 of them. I think I've got wow. another one that's okay. like 400. I think I've got another one that's like 467 or something like that in my book besides this 81. Uh, I, I remember that now, but I just do not see the reasoning for it. I guess what I mean is I don't see the reasoning for not numbering the blue border or the, the top one, the multicolored border one as well, so you could have a three-piece set. Mm -hmm. well, right. William, that was super informative. And I think we answered a lot of your questions. Yes, I appreciate the feedback. I'll, I'm going to, you know, put that information here and reach out to a couple of people and see if I can, you know, solve a couple of these mysteries as well. So enter in the others that you showed up, that you showed in on your, by hand. Enter those in where they go to. Okay, I can. It's not a problem. Not a problem. Um, I understand. Uh, well, uh, Gene Skillen called 
while we were driving back from Gunnersville with a question about venturing CSPs. The, um, as a memory, I would say that putting together the Maddie Colwell uh, National Venturing President CSP was was just a great experience because I got to work with Maddie and my daughter, Auburn, um, as we put this patch together. So, you know, working with the youth to um, to work out these patch designs and uh, sharpen some of their skills or helping them discover skills that they never knew that they had is a real joy for me. So putting that CSP together was a lot of fun. So on the left hand, like for example, on the left hand side of that path of that CSP, Maddie is there holding a, a bow because she taught archery at Camp Comer. And um, she posed for us. So we, my daughter did this whole model shoot with Maddie, you know, to get the right angle, to get the right position until Maddie was happy with the photograph. And then we brought that, you know, work the artwork into the patch. So little things like that. There's a lot that goes into it. But again, teaching the youth some skills is a lot of fun. Oh yeah, and the Circle K, be excellent to each other. Yeah, I was going to say. Watch uh, Bill and Ted's Most Excellent Adventure every year. So that was a thing. Yeah, I, I was going to say Bill and Ted are very near and dear to my heart. So for this to come out, I think this yeah. is the first Bill and Ted reference I've seen on a scout patch. So this is definitely one of my <laughs> my treasured. Yeah. I, I yeah. treasure this one because that be excellent to each other is like, I wish we could all do more of that. It's a mantra. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the the NYLT staff would watch that every year in their staff development weekends. I've seen it often. <laughs> <laughs> so there's cool. lots of little Easter eggs in that in that patch. Cool. Thanks, John. Uh, William, do you say there was 250 of these made? That's that's what when you scan the back of it, that's what it said. And they're they're not easy to come by either. They're oh no, hard to find. Believe it or not, 